right, everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. I'm very excited about this. I'm here with my friend uh, Tim from Tim's Talks Talkies. How's it going, Tim? Doing well. I'm excited for this. Me too, man. We, uh, if you've been around the channel for a little while, uh, not long ago, a few months ago, you and I talked classics. And with this being the Criterion Sale, uh, Barnes & Noble, I thought it would be fun to get from you five Criterion recommendations that are from the classic era. And so, friends, if you're into classics, um, I hope you'll enjoy this. If you're not into classics, I hope you maybe will find something that you can potentially pick up. So, um, Tim, I do have one question for you before I get the five recommendations from you. And okay. this, it's this, is, and again, I love your channel for tons of reasons, but one of them is because of your classics, that you're, you're, you're passionate about it. Um, a lot of people will not pick up classics. And I watch a lot of videos, and they kind of stay in the comfortable area that they know. But why would you recommend someone kind of like get out of their comfort zone a little bit and just attempt a classic if maybe they've never tried one before? I think the biggest thing, the thing I love the most is you get to see where movies came from. Yeah. Uh, as much as something you could watch something older and be like, oh, that effects didn't look good or that's kind of corny. It is so wonderful to see where movies came from, where actors came from, all the lineage of Hollywood. I absolutely love that. So I, that would be the best thing. If you're a movie fan, you got to see the early stuff. You have to see where it all came from. Your MCU movies don't exist without these early, <laughs> early movies. <laughs> it's very true, man. And there's sometimes you watch something, you're like, oh, that's totally where this modern day director got this. Oh, um, yeah. And those are really fun to see. And then you're right. You just get to see these like unbelievable actors, actresses, directors, do this amazing stuff that it's all out there. We just didn't know of it, you know? Yep. So cool. Yeah. I, um, I highly recommend it friends. If you've never picked up a classic, get out of your comfort zone and I'm going to get out of my comfort zone during this sale. And I'm picking up something from the seventies and from the eighties, which is my eighties is my biggest blind spot. So um, <laughs> I will be doing that as well. Well, cool, Tim, let's have from you, your five classic recommendations and, um, I have a blank sheet of paper, except for the other film I wrote down that you recommended already in the pre-conversation. Um, <laughs> so I plan on writing down a bunch of titles here. So anyway, what's your uh, first pick for classic recommendation? All right. Well, so for the first one, what I watched most recently, uh, it would be Arsenic and Old Lace, which you are you are familiar with. Yes. Uh, but this is a wonderful blast of a movie so i'm already a huge Cary grant fan it's right there with james stewart as my one of my favorites of classic hollywood but this movie is like a slapstick riot uh, it's basically Cary grant just got married goes to the house of his aunts who uh have apparently been committing murders and they think it's okay and then his brother is also a murderer and it's just it's this big slapstick I, I don't even know what how you print how you'd say it. Uh, unfortunate events, I guess a series of unfortunate events that happen. It is uh -huh. so much fun. Just seeing Cary Grant's reaction to everything, an absolute blast. This was a stage play per first, and you totally see how it was a stage yes. play. Yes. Oh, I, I loved this so much. <laughs> I had a blast. That was one that I was, it was on my list to pick up in the sale. And I literally could not wait the one week and save seven bucks by waiting a week. And instead I bought it on Amazon uh, immediately when it came out. The only thing I could knock this for, and I still I've definitely picked this up. Anybody watching? Definitely. Cause the transfer is phenomenal. It is. It's kind of lackluster on special features on criterion way. Normally you expect more from them. Uh, you get a trailer and you get the radio play. That's about the extent of the special features. Yeah. Really would have liked more. But the transfer is impeccable. So, and the movie is fantastic. Absolutely. I thought I'd never seen it before. I owned it on DVD, but I never watched it. I will say it's so frenetic. The entire film, it's just like, what? What? Like the whole thing is just, yeah, it's, but it's so good. And, and Cary Grant, he was like, it's probably some of the goofiest I've seen him in any of his films. Yes. Which is a lot of fun to see him because he's such a suave guy. So it was fun to see him in that kind of a role. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's I can't recommend that one high enough, but I'm really hoping we keep getting more Cary Grant. They've been uh, 
they've been really on a Cary Grant kick, and I I like that. Please give us more. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> cool. So that's a great first one. Or what's your second pick? All right. Next one for classic. Uh got notorious. I've never seen that. You didn't see the oh man, no. notorious is so 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 good. Uh this is one of the best, I think, Hitchcock movies overall. Uh again, freaking Cary Grant. I mean, I yeah. could have just pulled kept pulling Cary Grant, but uh <laughs> it's one of those spy type movies where you don't know good versus bad. Uh Hitchcock's direction is just impeccable. Uh I love this one so much. This is probably top five for Hitchcock. It's even though, where is it? I got it up there. Trouble with Harry is, is becoming one of my favorites because that one is such a blast. <laughs> <laughs> I just switched out all my posters and I went with all classics up there. <laughs> I well, I saw you hit. just posted that video for that. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I was like, you know what? I did classics. <laughs> <laughs> now, what year did that one come out? That uh, is... 46 you know what i do i thought i might have had it on i have it on i don't have the criterion sorry that didn't look familiar but i do have it on blu-ray but i have not seen it yet yeah uh, ingrid bergman is just great and uh, yeah i i love her in casablanca so much <laughs> so, yeah that's a that's a fantastic movie great hitchcock i haven't watched enough hitchcock i own some hitchcock but i haven't watched enough hitchcock Oh man, this is not one of the, well, it is a recommendation in, in the sort that it's amazing, but uh, this is also a great Hitchcock one, Criterion. Yeah. I, I can't believe this is his only best picture. I, I, really? Yeah, that blows my mind. Wow. <laughs> and it's Crazy. it's pretty early in his career too. So he wins yeah. it relatively early. And then all these amazing movies afterward, uh, Psycho and Rear Window and Vertigo and none of that stuff wins. <laughs> crazy awesome great second pick man thanks all right so for pick three this we're going to 1936 and i've talked about this one in the past uh it's called things to come uh i've recommended this one in decent amount of streams because no one really talks about this one like ever uh it's basically the movie takes place over a hundred years so it's a varying cast and it's a, a World War Three that, well, actually it's a World War Two technically because it came out before World War Two. So it's a, it's a fictitious World War Two that uh, pretty much took the world into dark ages and then the world okay. rebuilding. It's, it's great. And cool. it ends with the, the idea of trying to take man out of earth and expand it to the universe. So building a rocket ship. So like the idea is just, it's this cool concept of people trying to evolve and expand their horizons. I really dug this one and like, no one talks about it. Look at that amazing artwork. It is gorgeous artwork. I've never even heard of it before. Uh, this is, so it's, it's HC, HG Wells. And what's funny is, uh, oh, I don't know where to grab it. Oh, here it is. Okay. So it was made because HG Wells okay. hated Metropolis which blows my mind because Metropolis is great, but he hated this. And his intention was to create this to be the better version of this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I highly, highly recommend this one and it, like never gets talked about. It's a uh, spy number six sixty. If anyone cares, I should have read the other spine numbers. <laughs> I'm going to look into that tonight. It's, it's really cool seeing the concept of World War II before World War II. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So next one, we'll actually be talking about real World War II with uh, Night Train to Munich. Also, nice. it doesn't get talked about much. This is, so this is a British World War II movie that came out in 1940. And you know, I'd say, what do you say? 90% of the war, World War II movies out there are United States based. It's from our perspective. Right. There's not near as much from the British perspective or really anybody else. It's mostly all about the United States and what we did. So it's cool seeing a World War II movie bef about before we were even involved. 1940, we wanted nothing to do with this. We weren't involved. So it's just, it's it's a cool movie. It's It's simple plot, just trying to, get a scientist away from 
the Nazis essentially to, to get them away and get them to the Swiss Alps to safety. And it's taking a night train. Uh, it, it is a, it's a fun time. And if you're a fan of miniatures, it is it's impeccable miniatures. Love miniature work. It's like really? a lost art. Yeah. I, you, you look at a miniature and it looks fake, but that's kind of part of the charm yeah. of it. You know what I mean? So I, uh, I love that stuff. I don't know why we don't do it in movies anymore. It's now just CGI this CGI that when I would love to see more miniatures and even, uh, so I, I did a stream recently on fans of something. We watched little shop of horrors and that had amazing matte paintings and I miss matte paintings also. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you could, you just, everyone now just CGI's everything. I want paintings for backgrounds. I want miniatures for buildings. Like, yeah, I miss that stuff. I just picked that one up from Pam at the video game movie dome. I haven't seen it yet, but I just picked it up maybe Ooh. two months ago. It's, it's a good time. It's uh it's entertaining. It goes pretty quick. It's what is it? 95 minutes. So it's a short movie. Spine 523, if, if anyone cares. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So awesome. Last, and your final pick. All right. Last one. I definitely talk about this one often enough. And if anyone's watching this, you're like, oh, you're, they're rolling their eyes right now. I'm like, oh, he's choosing summertime. Uh, I'm choosing summertime. <laughs> <laughs> summertime is a blast, man. Uh, this is 1955. I'm a big Audrey fan, but... Catherine Hepburn is pretty awesome herself. Give me the two Hepburns and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> two unrelated Hepburns. Yes, unrelated Hepburns. <laughs> but uh, this is just a wonderful movie of her taking a vacation. That's that's literally the whole movie, taking a vacation and falling in love with a married man and just what to do about it. That that's That's all. It's not this deep, complex plot. The first 45 minutes or so of the movie is literally just her having fun on vacation that does it's That's just cool it's a wonderful movie uh like i said it's not deep plot look at that artwork it's great artwork it really is so i love those movies and i would recommend any of those i was what's funny is this is how big your influence is before we got on i watched a video of someone doing their 10 films that they wanted to pick up for this sale and two of them were ones that you mentioned and they specifically named you as to why uh, you recommending these films. So that's your reach, my friend, and your influence. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. I know yeah. people have said they've bought this because I keep hyping it up. So <laughs> uh -huh. I, I hope people that do buy this really end up enjoying it. Like I said, it's, it's such a simple plot, but sometimes that's all you, you need. It's nice, simple romance yeah. with beautiful scenery. I mean, Venice is a gorgeous city as it is, but the cinematography is outstanding. And a little uh, piece of trivia, actually, uh, there's a spot where she walks backwards and falls into the canals. She actually got an eye infection that stayed with her her entire life after really? she fell. Yeah. Yep. That's so weird. <laughs> wow. That one and The Night of the Hunter are the two I hear I've heard you recommend the most. Oh my God. Night of the Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> That's I didn't pull Night of the Hunter here because I feel like I've run that one into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose summertime is the newer release. So you get to, you have a few more miles on that one. Exactly. After a little while, I'll be like, okay, summertime can take a break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, man, those are great recommendations. And um, friends, again, if you're watching, trust Tim, he knows what he's talking about. Night of the Hunter. He recommended to me. And that's probably not the genre I'm into the most. And I absolutely love the film. I was like glued to it and loved it. So Tim knows what he's talking about. And he's recommended me some films that I've absolutely loved. So um, those are five great films, man. Thank Folks you. Pick yeah. one up. And I'm glad you like Night of the Hunter because that's a dark movie, but it's so good. <laughs> Literally everything about that film was amazing. Like visually, it was amazing. Uh, the music was haunting. Um, and I was shocked at how the underwater scene, at how graphic that was for that time period. Yeah, right? Yeah. It, it, that's what a lot of stuff that movie pulled off was not really done in 50s movies. No, not at it, all. It, which is probably part of the reason that movie bombed pretty bad. I mean, that's the only movie we got from Charles Lawton. And 
I think part of it is because the fifties, even though fifties is my favorite decade with the eighties, but uh, fifties is kind of light and fluffy decade. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're after the war, people want fun, like that monster sci-fi and a lot of rom-com stuff. We didn't get a lot of like deep, dark stuff in the fifties. And what we did get didn't do that well. So appreciate something like Night of the Hunter, I guess, the fact that we even got it. Yeah. Because you have, like, knowing that they're looking for something sweet in that decade, him singing those little Sunday school songs, oh. contrasted with what he's doing, is <laughs> yeah. insane. Yep. And just creates this, like, tension the entire time you're watching it. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's such so a good. He's such a great bad guy. He really believes he's doing good, even though he's a horrible, despicable person. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Crazy. Well, man, thank you so much, Tim. I appreciate your time. And I always love talking classics with you and to get to call it to talk classics and criterion with you. Yeah, it's great, man. So I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Yeah, thank you. I had a blast. I love, like I said, I love talking this stuff. It's so much fun. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> well, you're uh, one of the few people I know who enjoy talking classics. So I always appreciate your time. Cool. Well, thanks, man. Enjoy the sale. I hope you pick up a ton of stuff that you get to really enjoy. So I oh, can't wait to check them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to the haul videos. So cool. Well, thanks, Sam. Have a great night, man. Yep. Bye.